Western Extreme, brought to you by Bowtech Archery, refuse to follow. Can-Am, the facts say a lot, but the ride says it all. Irish Setter Boots, the hunt never ends. Shell Rotella, the engine oil that works as hard as you. This is a show of shows. Really excited because we're hunting Roosevelt in my home state of Washington. Elk hunting is part of our family. Many times we've been called the elk family because we basically spend the entire fall hunting them. This was a really fantastic opportunity for Lori and I to get together and be able to go down to the other part of the state on the coast and hunt Roosevelt's. Now it's no secret that I-5 kind of is a divider but this is really on the Roosevelt side of I-5. These are the giants. These are where the real big coastal Roosevelt's live. Now, just a few years ago, Lori went on her very first hunt that she had ever been on. We went up to the Toshodi River drainage with the family. It's one of my favorite places on earth to be able to hunt an elk. We went way early before the kids went back to school. We're able to ride through the high country, cross the river, and just be in the natural habitat when those bulls are still in their summering mode. Now finally, everything's coming together and this bull is gonna cooperate, it looks like. He's staying still long enough. Everybody's kind of giving me directions as far as, okay, Lori, he's behind this tree. There's a clearing right here, a few yards in front of him. He looks like he's gonna step out there. He's going in that direction. He's just stepping out here now. And finally, he cooperates. He stands perfectly broadside for me for long enough for Lori to pull the trigger on him. For the moment of truth, make this one shot count. And bam, that bull is down. Takes what Jimmy calls the sleeping pill, and it's over with. He's down. <laughs> Congratulations. That is so exciting. That was awesome. She did it. <laughs> Lori, I have been waiting all of these years forever and ever and ever for her to take her first big game animal. And it just happened to be an elk, my favorite one in life, with my favorite person in life. There we go. This has got to be one of the most anticipated hunts I've ever done in my life. Lori made an absolutely extraordinary shot on an elk up in British Columbia at the Toshoda River Drain. Her very first big game animal and it will not be your last. I'm going to convince her to do it again, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> well after Lori's success on her first bull elk, we went to Montana with J&J &J Guide Service. This was a really spectacular hunt because we were able to hunt right during the peak of the rut. There were lots of deer moving around. We woke up that morning and there was literally a small blizzard starting to come in. We were glassing up and down the river corridor when we found a huge mule deer buck. Lori's right here. Climb on him. Go ahead and take him now. Squeeze through the trigger. Dead deer! You absolutely hammered him! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! That is an absolute mess! He was Guys, girl power right there. That was Lori just gave the sleeping pill. Guys, I just wanted to show you this deer. Look at him. She had to shoot through a bunch of stuff, and I'm really proud of her because she got in the gun and she was able to lay in a prone position, squeeze the trigger, she's cold. All of the things that usually get us sportsmen, you know, frustrated. And uh, she was able to just make a magical, magical shot on an absolutely beautiful deer. And uh, we want to thank everyone for watching every week. And this is a special show that's dear and dear to my heart because my wife of 22 years, after watching me travel all over the world, just laid the hammer down on a big mule deer buck. This is it. It's that time of year, muzzleloader season. Now we're with Hillbilly and all season long, he has been looking at videotaping and getting game tracker pictures of the biggest Roosevelt bulls we've ever seen. And this is Lori's very first muzzleloader hunt and her very first Roosevelt hunt. So we're excited about this. We're gonna all get together and we're definitely gonna find some big bulls this week.
Now this is our first time that we really spent any time behind a muzzle loader. So there's a lot of learning to be done because Washington State has a bunch of rules and regulations on what you can and can't use. Very restrictive on the muzzle loader side. So we had to have an open primer and open sights. That really limited our effective range. Knowing that we really had to be within 150 yards in order to be ethical to the animal and stay within our effective range. So what we do is to put Lori behind the gun at a range and give her some powder. Well, the first gun that I had in my hand is a Winchester X150. It had a number 11 nipple, synthetic camel stock, a really good trigger. The gun weighed enough in order for it to set and it built some really good groups. This definitely started to be one of those guns that we felt comfortable with. Well, the second gun that I wanted to test is a CVA Buckhorn. Now, this is a really good starter rifle, and I think it's really cost effective, extremely lightweight, but with 150 grains of powder, it might just have a little too much recoil for it. It's also set up with a number 11 nipple. It had a fiber optic iron sight. It wasn't very precise. It was a little bit too big. You really couldn't dissect the target like you could with the Winchester. But I think this is a really good all around inexpensive gun for somebody who's just starting, especially with a restricted state like Washington with the rules and regulations. Well, the last gun that I picked up is an Austin Halleck 420. But I really liked the gun from the time that I picked it up. It's heavy, so it physically sets. It won't have much recoil for the 150 grains of powder that we're actually putting into it. And with the open breech like it is, in case we needed a second shot, we could load this gun, I think, a lot quicker. And the consistency for it going off with an old Mustard style primer cap, I feel more comfortable with. This style of primer is my favorite because I really felt more confident that it will physically go off due to its size. This just felt like a good old fashioned American steel. It just had everything in the combination along with a really good fiber optic sight. So overall, after we've tested all three of them, checked their group sizes, Lori shot this gun more effectively and I think it's just an all around better choice. The one thing you learn about muzzleloader hunting is there is a lot of choice when you're trying to pick out the right gear. Now the load was 150 grains of triple seven pellets behind a 295 grain power belt. We had enough bullet weight and this would be a really good load for those big Roosevelt elk. Now many of you might know that those Roosevelt's are a little bit bigger than the Rocky Mountains. So their body composure and size, it's truly a big, strong, big game animal. We needed enough horsepower out of these muzzle loaders to make it happen. Another thing that we learned is clean the gun after every single shot. Then you'll know that you won't have any fouling in the barrel that it's burning all of the powder, and that your next shot will be on target. So opening morning finally came. Jim and I make our way into where Shane's been seeing these bulls. It's still dark outside, and we can hear the first bugle at about 400 yards. So up to now, all the elk bugling that I've heard has either been off a of videotape or from Jim walking around the house practicing his bugles. This morning, I hear real live elk bugling and it was amazing. It was majestic. Just hearing the elk bugling caused so much adrenaline and so much excitement. It was amazing for me. It didn't take long for that first season for the light to come up and for us to see a bunch of cows milling around. We kind of worked the backside of the timber and figured that we had to completely stay out of sight and out of sound in order to move, hoping that those bulls would stay out there long enough. Those bulls are still bugling. I can see several cows right here, but I think the bulls are still up and around the corner a little bit. You gotta be bold and quiet. We're gonna sneak right through here and just go really slow. Okay. Just pay attention, okay? All right. If you look off to the left, because there still could be some cows off to our left, but I'm gonna pay attention mostly to the right side. So it's getting to be daylight, we're getting closer to the herd, the bugles are getting louder, and my adrenaline is going crazy. When first light came, it really started to see the outline of the cows mingling around, working that timber edge. So the cows and the calves start coming in, and my adrenaline starts to pump. There's a spike with them, and I can hear a few other bulls bugling still off in the distance. We decided that we were gonna go back in the timber, loop around, try to get the right wind, and be able to get into position. Move up here. Let's get in position and see if we can find a way to shoot off. 
Now we knew that there were several big bulls around and a bunch of satellite smaller bulls that were still legal. So we snuck to the field's edge where we could hear the bulls. We could see the cows coming in and Jim says, just wait, it's just a matter of time. The bulls are gonna be here in the field soon. So we're sneaking up, getting closer to this herd, and we see the first bull with some cows and some calves. When we got into position, we looked out in front of us, and sure enough, a big six-point bull. That right there is an absolutely dandy bull. He's right here. That other bigger bull that they were talking about might be around the corner because this one is the one we were here in Bugle, and then that one off at the distance, I think, is on the other side around that briar. Right. So I don't think we can see him yet. Jim even says he's bigger than any Roosevelt that he has personally taken. And Jim wants me to take a shot at this bull, but I want to wait because I just have a feeling that there's a big brother around the corner. We could have shot him way earlier, but we wanted that light to come up in order to get some really good camera footage of some of the most spectacular Roosevelt bulls that we've ever seen. Jim says, take him big, take him. But something just told me to wait, that there was something better. It was the first day of season, and if I had to wait for a few more days, that was fine. I was blown away at how beautiful this bull was. And he was fired up. He was bugling and chasing all the cows around. This bull was well within range, but I wanted to wait and see if the other bull was coming in. I kept hearing him bugle, and he sounded like he was making his way in to come check out this herd. My gosh, I sure hope that Lori has not made the wrong decision. It was directly in front of us, less than 150 yards. I really thought it was go time. We had known that there was one bigger bull around and Lori had heard him bugle off to our right hand side and she made a decision I don't think I ever could have made. She actually passed on this big bull to wait for the bigger one. Lori, here comes that second bull right there, see him? Oh my gosh. And then we looked off and here he comes. Finally, the other bull comes out. He's noticeably bigger and I knew that this was the bull that I wanted to try to shoot an absolute giant, one of the biggest Roosevelt bulls that I've ever seen, and he's coming with another set of cows directly in front of us. Look at those ivory tips, he's beautiful. That's the one I want to take. Seriously? Yeah. Maybe okay, he see. is a better bull. He looks a little bit older. Yeah. But this one's a slam dunk shot right here. Yeah, but that one's moving in. Let's give him some time. You can't just wait on him. Well, it's opening morning in Western Washington in my home state. My wife, Lori, has a muzzleloader tag. And we've got some big bulls headed our way. So all of a sudden appears the big brother. And he is amazing. And then we looked off and here he comes. All I can see is just these big ivory tips on this elk. And when I saw him, I said, Jim, that's him. That's the one I want to take. And Jim just about peed his pants. I think there was a little bit of jealousy going on there. Lori is so calm. She's so patient. It's no joke that girls know how to shoot better than boys. Got a good solid rest? Yeah, I'm good here. OK, wait now. I know. This bull's making his way into his cows. He's pushing him around a little bit. I'm into the gun. I'm ready to go. I'm just waiting for the broadside shot. I want you to aim about six inches high. And I want you to just be really, really still. Okay. You ready? Wait for him to turn broadside. Okay. I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Go ahead right now. Everything around us was a big puff of smoke. And we had to wait for the smoke to clear 
in order to see what had happened after she pulled the trigger. So the shot goes off, I get the report, smoke clears, and I've got my first Roosevelt. He's there on the ground, and Jim is jumping for joy. He is so excited. That bull right there is an absolute toad bull. Guys, you're watching Western Stream, and Lori, for her third hunt, has now just shot another huge monster, bigger than any Roosevelt that I've ever shot. I wish that I wouldn't have spent my tag earlier. I'd love to shot the one you <laughs> Sorry, passed babe. on. Sorry, I'll help you, you out next time. Can you believe she passed on that first bullet under 100 yards? You know, we How could hear work? that. We could hear that other one bugling to him, and I knew he just sounded, he just sounded older. He sounded more mature. So I'm glad we waited. I was going to take the shot, and you asked, you told me to wait, so we did. All right, that's it. Good advice, there, guys. We got it. We got to call Shane now. Yep, let's get Shane, Shane and the boys together. We're gonna go collect Lawrence Roosevelt. Well, this is it. This is a very proud moment in the Burnworth family. We're about ready to walk up on Lori's very first Roosevelt bull elk here in the state of Washington with Hillbilly. We're excited about it. We got Jeff here. And so this is kind of like a family hunt. And today is opening day, which we're uh, quite excited about. You ready? Yeah, I am. Let's go I see mean, him. If you think about it, we're going to get to put our hands on this wild bull elk for the very first time. <laughs> Lori, you got to touch the horns for the first time. That's it. He's spectacular. You know, I've often said I've never drank alcohol, but once in my life I've never taken a drug, but I am an alcoholic. And uh, our family, this is our favorite, favorite, favorite fest at the time of the year that we get to hunt these all the way through September and then all the way up into November. This is uh, Lori's very first, um, you know, Roosevelt Bull Elk. Babe, congratulations, Thanks, babe. you did a great job. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. And look at look at this, you guys. This is a, an actual, real 800-pound animal. You know, a lot of times everybody talks about how the Roosevelt bulls are bigger than the Rocky Mountain elk just by sheer size. And a lot of times I think to myself, you know what? I've shot a lot of both of them, and they're pretty much even Steven. But this elk right here, look at the girth on his neck. Look at the size and the massiveness of this bull. And this is a rosy. Look at the horns on him. You know, one of the unique things about a Roosevelt bull elk lore is that you know, I always remember from the time I was a little boy looking at the red antlers, you know, where a lot of the Rocky Mountain bulls that, you know, that are rubbing on a lot of the darker timber are real black horn, and these are real red horn. It's from the alder trees that they, they live amongst. And so this, this guy rubbed on both because he's still got some real black in him, but he also has the real red, which really symbolizes and just reminds me of home, you know. Right. Well, I love these ivory tips. Yeah, that's one of the things that uh, Laura was looking at, you know, because we had that other big, huge six in front of us, and uh, we had a 110-yard shot at that, and he turned broadside like six times, and then Laura's like, no, the other bull's bigger. I'm like, are you sure? Because he's le leaving. And then he just magically turned and came in. Woman's luck, for sure. Beautiful. Yeah. Good job, Mom. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff, I was just wondering, have you ever shot a Roosevelt bull no, elk this big? I don't think I've shot a Rocky Mountain this big, so. <laughs> <laughs> she has us beaten both, in both areas. So go ahead, ask me the question. Have you shot a Roosevelt this big? No, I have never shot a Roosevelt bull she elk this big. She has both of us beat. I know. I don't think we're ever gonna be able to live it down. No, we can't take her hunting anymore. No, it's exactly, ridiculous. that's Dang, it. That's not fair. Every time she shows up, she shoots something big. I know. Doggone it. I have good guides. The really good hunters of the uh, Burnworth family are definitely the women of the family. 